The question has been asked actually by more than one person, what's the difference between a six and a half and a seven and a quarter inch circular saw? Now, you find circular saws available in a number of different sizes, even with ones as small as three and a half inches. And you can find circular saws that have blades up to 10 inches, which is the typical size for a table saw. So what's the big deal? What's the difference? Well, a lot of it depends on what you're trying to do with the saw. Now, some of these saws are developed more specifically for contractors. For example, the 10 inch one I just mentioned is designed so that you can cut through four by fours. So people who are making decks and fences uh, on a regular basis might want one of those saws, even though they're very expensive, just for that purpose. So that you can cut through those four by fours. But what about for us? What about the average guy that's working in his workshop, working in his garage, working around his home? What's the difference and what do we need? Now I've got two different saws here. I've got a six and a half and a seven and a quarter. These are my personal saws. I've had them both for a while. I've used them both a fair amount, uh, especially the seven and a quarter. I've had that for a longer amount of time than the six and a half. So we're not comparing brands, okay? We're not comparing uh, this saw versus that. We're ta talking more generalized about the category. This one's a Ryobi cordless, and this is a Porter Cabral, and it has a tail, okay? Generally speaking, that's the first difference you'll notice when you look at these two different saw sizes. All of the six and a half inch saws, circular saws that I can find, are cordless saws. I have not seen any that have a cord. Um, they basically, when they started making cordless circular saws, they went smaller. Why? Well, because of power. It all boils down to battery power. Originally, all the circular saws that were, were came out with that were, were cordless, and when I say original, I'm talking like the 1970s, 1980s, were about three and a half inches. They were good for cutting through a sheet of plywood, and that's about the max you can do with them. You really couldn't cut through dimensional lumber, two by fours, two by sixes, especially not like a two by 12. The seven and a quarter is the old standby. It's been around for a long time. Um, I've had one of these, geez, pretty much my whole life since I started buying tools back as a teenager. Uh, when you, when you, obviously you can see there's a size difference between the two. This one, of course, has to be plugged in to work. It's not gonna pull air, power out of the air. When you compare the weight of the two of them, the seven and a quarter is considerably heavier than the six and a half. So if you're looking for something for portability, the six and a half is a great option. It's gonna save you on weight. If you're working in awkward areas, the six and a half is much easier to work with. But it does have its limitations. Number one, a smaller diameter blade is going to give you less depth of cut. Now, if we look at this particular saw here, on the, uh, on the blade guard is marked the various depths for setting your, your shoe, okay? And the maximum depth you can get out of this saw is um, 1 and 11 16. So that's just a shade over you know, 11, one and a half. Basically the idea is you can cut a two by four with it, okay? When they picked six and a half inches, I believe that's what they were looking at, is how big do we have to make it, or how small we can, can we make it, and still be able to cut a two by four. By comparison, the seven and a quarter inch blade uh, on this corded saw is gonna allow you to cut through just over two inches. Now it may not seem like a big deal, but there may be times when it makes a difference. If you wanna cut that, that uh, four by four, you're gonna be hard pressed to cut it with, with a six and a half inch saw. Can you do it? Yes, theoretically it's possible. But the extra blade diameter on the larger saw allows it to cut that four by four in two passes, one from each side, okay? There's a big, there's a difference that's important. Um, but the other big thing that you see is a difference between these two saws is how much power they have. Now, battery technology has come a long way through the years. I remember cordless tools starting out with uh, nickel cadmium batteries. And nickel cadmium, for the time, they were good, but they didn't have the energy density. In other words, you couldn't pack as much electrical power into a battery as you can the modern lithium ion batteries. That was a huge difference. Your batteries wouldn't last as long, you could drill as many holes, you couldn't cut as many boards, whatever, okay? Uh, right now, this particular saw, according to Ryobi's website, you can cut through 215 two by fours on a battery charge. Now, I've never tested that to see, I'm going based on what they say on their, on their saw. The corded saw, the seven and a half quarter inch saws, well, you're only limited by how much power you've got. As long as you've got electricity flowing, you can keep cutting, okay?
But, but I've noticed personally through my experience of working with cordless tools, and I've been working with cordless tools since the 19, well, the latter 1970s, that as battery technology has increased, you also torque has increased. The amount of actual power you get out of the saw has increased, okay? So if I compare this circular saw to a circular saw that was made back then, or if I compare a cordless drill made today that's an 18 volt lithium ion um, cordless drill to the very first cordless drill I had, which had a 7.2 volt battery, it's a lot more power in the 18 volt battery. The higher your battery voltage, the more torque you can get out of the motor. That's just basic physics, okay? So that's a big deal. The cordless tools of today can do a lot more than the cordless tools of a couple of, gener or say, a generation ago or a couple of decades ago. So when you're looking at, you know, nowadays I would say that being cordless isn't the limiting factor that it used to be. Back in the 1970s, I wouldn't even think of, of having a cordless circular saw simply because there wasn't much I could cut with one. Like I said, I could cut with through plywood, half inch, maybe three quarter inch. Now I've cut three quarter inch plywood with this particular saw, this Ryobi, uh, and I'll tell you, it'll cut through it, but it will bog down a little bit because there's an awful lot of friction that's generating when you're going through that wood. When you're cutting through plywood, you're not just cutting through wood fibers. You're also cutting through the rosin that's used to bond the, the veneers together. That generates a lot more friction and a lot more heat. So it's actually harder to cut through three quarter inch plywood than it is to cut through a two by four. And that's something to keep in mind. What are you actually going to be cutting with your saw? Because if you're going to be cutting plywood, that's something to consider, okay? Um, the seven and a quarter, it doesn't care. It, it will do fine with two by fours, two by sixes, two by eights, two by twelves. Uh, it'll do fine with three quarter inch plywood. Um, both of them uh, are constructed similar. They're the, the, the larger saw is probably a little heavier duty as far as in its design and construction. One obvious way is if you look at the shoe of these two, this shoe is stamped steel, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that, all right? This one is cast aluminum. It's thicker, it's heavier, it's more rigid. Uh, that may make a difference in some things, especially over time. This saw, if you were to drop it, I would say, and it landed on a shoe, yeah, it'd probably bend. This one may not bend, okay, even though it's a heavier saw. So those are, those are factors that come into play when you're looking at the, at the actual saws. Now, let's, do, let's make a real test here. Let's see how they cut, okay? I've got a, this was a, just a, a block that I used, a spacer block that I used for a while. I've got a couple of two by sixes here that have been milled down about five inches, okay, with half inch plywood. And what I wanna do is I wanna make a cut with each saw and let's look how they do. So let's start with the corded one because that's kind of our standard that we're gonna go by, okay? Okay, we see it had no trouble cutting through that. We didn't hear it slow down any, we didn't hear it bog down any as it went through. It, it sliced through that wood like there's no problem whatsoever. Now let's try the same thing with the smaller cordless saw um, and uh, see how it does, okay? All right, so I had two things there as I, as I cut this with the smaller saw. The first thing is that I heard the blade slow down just a little bit when the blade hit the wood, okay? It wasn't anything major, but as you saw, it bogged down before it got all the way through. Now that's not so much the cutting action that's doing that, it's the friction. The friction of the wood against the blade. That's your real uh, drag on a saw, okay? Did it cut through it? It still cut through it. Is it still good to go? It's still good to go. I could keep cutting. I could make a whole bunch of cuts here, you know, supposedly as, as many as 215. So it'll do the job. The thing is both saws are gonna do the job. The question for you, when you're making your selection, when you're shopping for saws, how heavy a duty use are you gonna give that saw and where are you gonna give, do that use? If you're gonna be doing a lot of heavy duty cutting, let's say you wanna refinish uh, or finish an entire basement, you may wanna consider going with a heavier duty saw that's, that's not cordless because one, you've got electricity there, two, you're gonna be doing a lot of cutting, and so maybe that would actually serve you better.
On the other hand, if you're talking about general use for around the home for miscellaneous projects and stuff, and you're not doing a large volume, it'd probably be a whole lot easier to work with the smaller cordless saw. So it really depends on how you're going to be using the saw. Both are going to get the job done, and that's what counts.